within 25 percent of its market value, you're probably not going to see a change. If any, it's going to be a very slight one. And those whose market value is, you know, really less than that are going to see a tax decrease. Now, uh, this kind of gives you a breakdown of how the tax rate calculation took place, as I, as I talked about earlier, how it, how it actually drops. The uh, amount to be raised this year based on the town and school budgets and county uh, budget as well as to satisfy uh, community services was at this point in time $24,937,320. Now that's based, that tax rate is based on a current or the last year's, uh, or I guess what we have for this year we'd be carrying forward without a revaluation of a billion three hundred sixty-five million estimated value resulting in an $18.27 rate per thousand tax rate. Now, with the new assessed value, you have the same amount net to be raised, but the new assessed value of the town is a million, a billion, six hundred and forty-two million, seven hundred and seventy-four thousand, seven hundred, which results in a fifteen dollar and eighteen cent estimated tax rate. Now, what that, what the net amount of that really means is that there's about a seventeen percent reduction in the tax rate from what it was forecast to what it, what it could be. It may be, like I say, it may even be greater than that when we finally get to the final numbers in the, in the summer when we go to commitment. And the overall value increase for the town was 20%. Now, why do you say, you know, if we increase by 20%, why is the tax rate only going down 17%? Well, the net, uh, the net difference between the fiscal year 2011 and fiscal year 2012 budget increase was actually 3.7%. And the net income increase to median single-family homes was approximately 2.6 percent. So, the tax, or the overall spending increase, offset a little bit of that overall value increase in town. So it was consistent with where it should be. Now, uh, I gave a couple of different estimates here based on the previous median single-family home and the, what the uh, the new single-family median home would be, uh, based on. Last year's numbers, or fiscal year 2011's numbers, the median single-family home was approximately $258,000, and it carried about a $4,716 tax bill. Going forward with this year, the median is about $318,900, with an estimated tax rate, a tax bill of about $4,840, and that that shows that increase, the net that took place with the increase in spending. Now, I, I chose the median because quite frankly that is the dead midpoint of the whole uh, of all single family homes in town half of them are above them and half of them are below them so that gives you the exact point of point of match where where it's good to balance and, and estimate from over the years uh, councils and, and school boards have gone and used the median in their analysis to try to figure out how the estimate of impact would be on a on you know Mr. and Mrs. median homeowner in Cape Elizabeth Maine now, you'll see that the median assessed value changed approximately 24.73%. Now, as a result of this project, approximately 29% or accurate or at exactly 1,269 will, will see their property taxes decrease. The largest share of increased values were between a product or the core of all the properties in town were, were basically between 20% and 30% increase in value, so they're right around that, that, that median increase. And that's approximately 30% or 1,313 properties. And then the net tax uh, increase on those properties is going to basically range between 3 to 13% increase in taxes. Now there are uh, this is kind of a breakdown of the overall property value changes as far as the numbers. As you'll see, uh, the low ends, of course, are on the extreme. Those are the outliers. But, for instance, on the far left, 216 properties basically had a 0% change to uh, less than 10%. And then if you look on the high end on the right, uh, there was an increase of over 55% on about 231 properties. I looked at that the first time and said, wow, on both ends, but I realized on some of them there were uh, properties that uh, may have had, uh, you know, I may have repriced land because it might have been a wetland issue or something like that that might have been overvalued. 
uh, they might have taken a house down, and demolished a house, and it was not there April 1st, so that house was taken off the record, so it just had a land value, so it showed a significant change. On the opposite end of the spectrum, there were homes that increased significantly or greater than 55%, which I think is a heck of a lot, uh, and that was primarily driven by a home being added to a lot. Uh, or uh, Eastman Meadows, for instance, has six new condos that were added this year, plus the land, so that went from actually, uh, uh, you know, if you look at it, it was a new created lot for this year, so it was 100% plus pickup. Uh, or there are new ho homes that may have been built in Cross Hill. There's a couple of large homes in there that were added that the home values were significantly greater than what the land value they were assessed at last year was. So they had a large percentage increase. And what you'll see in the middle there, ultimately uh, the big, the, the core of them are basically from 15% to about 35%, uh, and that. Those are the high numbers, you know, four, ranging at 460 from an increase of four, 15 to 20 percent, and then the high at 668 is in the 20 to 25 percent change. So that's right where your median is sitting. So it just kind of gives you a breakdown as to where the, the bulk of the changes took place in town. Now I have a number of sample assessments. Uh, I didn't specifically identify the property themselves because, uh, quite frankly, I don't think that's the direction I want to go in, but it kind of gives you an idea of the flavor for certain sections of town where I had uh, changes. So I just named the road, uh, quite honestly. Uh, this this property, for instance, in 2010, last year's tax bill was assessed at 312500 but in 2009 it sold for $610,000. Uh, the assessment percentage was 51%. Now the 2011 assessed value brought it up to $536,000. And that brings it to an assessment percentage of about 88%. You say, why isn't it 100% of full market value? Well, I still think, you know, there is some potential that there may be some weakness in that in that segment of the market, and I try to build that in, looking at not just one sale because this isn't California, and we don't have Proposition 13 that you don't all of a sudden assess the properties instantly for what they sell for. And so what I do is ultimately mass appraisal. And I'm trying to use a lot of data to figure out the value for a lot of properties and not looking at one house and using three sales like you would on a single family home appraisal and knowing what that exact value was for that property. So I try to, uh, I try to give you an idea as to what the weight is on that. I had another home that sold on Oakhurst in 2010. It was assessed at 221000 It went up to, or it sold for 327500 the assessment percentage was 67.5%. Now this year it's going to, to 321,600 with a ratio of 98% of full market value. Uh, in Brentwood, for instance, on Phillip Road, a house was at $210,000 assessment last year with a sale price of 250. So that is actually at 80%. That's greater than the median. This house will most likely see its taxes go down this year as a result of it being overvalued with a new assessment of 237.1. Pilot Point Road had a home and what, with a water view, and it sold at uh, sold for 689. Was assessed at 535.3, and it's gone up to 633.3. So it's changed changed that gap, but it'll actually see its taxes go down as a result of it. Uh, in Bride Cove, for instance, which has been, uh, a, in my opinion, a neighborhood in town that has actually been undervalued. Uh, I'm sorry, paying more than its fair share for at least three to four years. This house here sold, for instance, for, uh, for 310000 with an assessment of 266.3, and now it's going to be assessed at 299.6. It's actually it was assessed before at 86%, now it's going to be at 97%. So I'm trying to, just to show you how it, across town, ultimately what we're trying to do is balance that equity. You can see, I gave you a couple of prime examples of where the equity was out of balance in other areas of town where it was out of balance and, and in one neighborhood, Brentwood, for instance, where it was pretty darn close to, to being in balance. So yeah, some we're gonna see the property taxes go up, some will see them go down, and some will see them stay up the same. A few uh, a few more final points before I wrap up. Uh, the assessment system has been upgraded, uh, meaning that the cost tables have been updated to the current cost schedules. I use a, uh, a company called Marshall Valuation, which is a national uh, national valuation estimating book and use that to update my cost my cost tables within my software and try to bring up what the cost of to reproduce or uh, replace a house not reproduce it but to replace it 
Um, so that brought that up. The cost of it was by about 20%, more or less, on your average home. The land values were updated based on the current sales. So what I did was analysis in every, on, in every neighborhood, on every map, I looked at every sale that took place over. I had, I had a basis of 350 sales, but that expanded to well over 400 sales because I had to expand my time period and some, others, uh, some other uh, parts of the analysis. I actually found that the 2004-2005 market was very similar to today's market versus 2006 and 2007 where I think prices really ramped up. Uh, saw the most growth, so I, I may look at those sales, but I, did, I would discount them in the, in the event that I saw that that was all I had. So I tried to figure out what the factor of, of the discount rate should be. Now, we do have the new values, and they are posted on the assessment page. I had a problem for about a day and a half of getting those booted up to the online search engine, but they are there. I verified that again, uh, much to my chagrin and apologies that they didn't come on when I anticipated them to. But uh, electronics are a great thing. Sometimes they are not, uh, but, but they are out there now. We also have our maps and our database available online. So if folks want to go and look at their assessment, look at their property, look at their neighbor's property, look at a property across town that has no relevance whatsoever to their assessment, go for it. We want to have that out there. Uh, everything I do, we try to have it in being an open book, so it, it's open to public scrutiny. And then uh, I would, one recommendation I would come out from this experience and looking at the amount of change that may have to take or does take place between properties is I'd recommend doing this probably more in a three to four year interval uh, rather than waiting. I know this this is kind of an extreme case because the market took off and came back so we kind of had you know eerily similar to back six years ago uh, but I'm really glad I didn't do it in 07 because we'd be back I would be doing it today revising it. A couple of towns are doing that right now and in Wyndham and Freeport have have revised their assessments. So I think we're in good stead as far as their overall, but I think going forward it'd be best to do them on a more regular basis because then the, the extremes and the changes aren't, aren't as much. Now uh, my schedule for this was for the past year plus. I did uh, my analysis computer entry. Uh, I did my review and analysis over the past 13 months. On May 1st I set the values for what they're going to be uh, for, the, for the notices. We mailed the notices on the 5th. Uh, informal hearings are going to begin on the 24th and all my notices show the number that they can call to schedule appointments and our support staff is more than willing and happy to do it. And then in August we'll go to commitment with the final values. Finally, I'd like to just, uh, you know, I'm the assessor, but I have a couple of ladies who work in our office. I share happily with the planner and the code enforcement officer. Uh, Ani Kovarati is our office manager and Janet Moran is also our support staff. And uh, they do uh, a lot of great work and they're happy to schedule appointments for anybody you'd like to get in and take a look at that. So with that being said, uh, thank you very much and I'd be happy to take any questions. Matt, thank you very much for uh, that summary. Uh, I, I think normally the council may have questions, but I, I, I'm mindful of the fact that we have a lot of people here to, to speak on uh, the Shore Road pathway and other issues perhaps. But before we let Matt go, does anybody have any questions now that I've thoroughly discouraged them? <laughs> Email. I, I just a comment. Go ahead, Jim. I think that I think the review with an eight-year disparity here and having that length of time, uh, there are states like Massachusetts that require by state law every three years to look at your assessment. So I, I think it's I think it's a, it's wise for us to to consider that as a as a as a going forward plan because uh, you know these disparities they're in certain sections of town or enormous. I think it's. For planning purposes, for all of us, you know, I think it, it's closer to to a three-year time frame. I think it's going to be the be best interest of citizens here in Cape Elizabeth. And we're very fortunate to have uh, you available to do these in-house, so we're not incurring that uh, expense. So again, thank you for all your uh, hard work on this, Matt. We're happy to. It's, it's going to be great. Uh, it's a great experience, and I, I just want to reinforce the fact that assessing an appraisal of real estate is not an exact science. <laughs> It's very much uh, a, a fluid discipline, if you will, if you can call it a discipline. And it's something that I know that I didn't come pre-programmed with all the answers to what properties are worth in the town of Cape Elizabeth. Uh, I've got a pretty good feeling what my own house is worth. And I think a lot of folks who live in the town have a really good feeling for what their houses are worth. So I welcome the hearings because it's like having an additional 9,000 eyes on, on a product that I came forward with. And I, I relatively don't take my feelings uh, 
uh, gently. So it's, it's, uh, it's good. But I look forward to the hearing process and moving forward. But I thank you very much for having me. Thanks a lot, Matt.